In this lecture, I will just introduce you to the terminology of group representations, some examples, permutation representation, regular representation, and then I'll talk about the direct sum of representations, equivalence of representations, sub-representations, irreducible, reducible representations. So we will develop uh, this terminology. It is basically the terminology. And then in the next lecture, I will connect representations uh, with modules. And then uh, once we have done that connection and then the how the study of uh, modules over group algebra is used in uh, the study of representations, I will discuss that and how irreducible modules correspond to irreducible representations, sub, sub modules correspond to sub representations and so on. And uh, then I will uh, say something on the characters of the group and the character table. So that is what plan is. So let's start with the uh, terminologies. So a rep what is a representation? As I have told you that if, G for uh, for us all groups are finite so because i am just discussing representations of uh, finite groups uh, g is a finite group and f is a field and a representation of g over f is a homomorphism from g to g l n f for some n greater than or equal to 1 and this this n uh, the size of the matrices this is called uh, the degree of the representation so let me tell you, when the field changes, the representation theory completely changes. The representation theory of a group over complex numbers is far different from its representation theory over rationals or over reals. If the field is algebraically closed, for example, say complex numbers, representations are easier to handle, easier to understand. The theory is much refined as compared to the representations uh, when the field is small. So, so this, this field is very important when we are talking of the representations. So in the beginning, I will talk of representations over a field, but then later on, uh, I will specialize to representations when the field is, say, complex numbers or any algebraically closed field, then we will have a better understanding of these things. So. Uh, So what is a linear representation? A linear representation is that when n is 1. So it's a homomorphism from G to uh, non-zero uh, uh, multiplicative group of a field. So linear, uh, so a homomorphism from a group G to a non-zero element, so GL1F. GL1F means non-zero elements of F, which is a group under multiplication. So any homomorphism from G to non-zero elements of a field is a linear representation of G. Examples. So you can have trivial representations, of course, trivial representations of any degree. So I can send G to the N cross N identity matrix, all, all group elements to N cross N identity matrix. I get a representation of identity representation of degree N. And trivial representations of degree one are just called trivial representations. So let's try to write down some representations of uh, cyclic groups. So let's try to write down degree one and then others I will uh, just uh, say on that. So suppose you have a cyclic group of order n and suppose I am writing, suppose my field is say complex numbers. Then I am writing homomorphism from G to non-zero complex numbers. And so all you, so this is the generator, generator of the group. All you have to know is where is generator going to? So this generate, this element A is of order N. And this, this is to be a group homomorphism. If I can send A to something, then of course I will send A to the I2. The same thing to, to the power i because I want this to be a group homomorphism. Now, because a to the n is identity, and then so this, if a goes to zeta, then zeta to the n also has to be identity because you want this to be a group homomorphism. So basically, you can send a to any nth root of unity, 
And what you get is a homomorphism from G to non-zero complex numbers. And these are linear representations of G over C, complex numbers. So if, if you have a field F, then you, you should have a root of, you can map A to a root of unity, uh, uh, nth root of unity inside, inside F, if it exists, then you will get a linear representation over F. And now you can blow the sizes. For example, uh, I don't know why uh, I actually wrote Z mod NZ first. So A was a generator. So the generator of the group, you, you send it to. Now I have uh, set some nth roots of unity on the diagonal. And basically you can send A to any matrix whose um, nth power is identity. So, so this, this can be any matrix A whose nth power is identity and then it will give me a homomorphism from G to GLM C for any size M. But then I will come to reducible, irreducible and you it will come to you that this is a sum of um, linear representations, degree one representations. Okay. So let's say uh, I want to write down linear representations of uh, clients four group, then basically I, I have to give you a homomorphism from say, say, let's say complex numbers over complex numbers. I have to give you homomorphism from Z2 cross Z2 to C and the generators of Z2 cross Z2 are this. So, and uh, so the elements of Z2 cross Z2 are this. So basically you, you have to see where are the generators going to and A is of order two. So A I can map to anything whose square is one. So I can map it to plus minus one, plus minus one. And uh, the relators, uh, these relations should be satisfied and which are satisfied for, for these elements. So these are representations. A goes to plus minus one, B goes to plus minus one. Then I get four representations. A goes to one, B goes to one, A goes to one, B goes to minus one, and so on. Those four choices. And then I get um, uh, four linear representations of uh, this Klein's four group over complex numbers. And uh, say, if you, if you want a field, then you should have a second root of unity in that field, and then you can have a linear representation. Otherwise, you will have to map A and B to both one and one, and you will only get identity representation over that field. So uh, let me uh, come to say dihedral. Say I I I, I am having uh, uh, Guru Meet. There is a repetitively one person. Uh, yeah. One uh, question is there. Uh, yes. Group action and permutation representation uh, is same as group representation. That is the question they are asking. Permutation representation in dummy and put means that after group action, action we have that embedding. Action yes. gives you group action gives you representation. Yeah, yeah. I will I will describe that. Okay. So uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Group act with if you have a group acting on a set X, then you have a representation of G on a vector yeah. space uh, with X as a basis. I will come to that later. I will come to that. So, uh, so these are, uh, so I've just taken dihedral group. I've just taken a dihedral group and let's try to uh, write down uh, linear representations of say this dihedral group, D into say over complex numbers. Now A, A goes to something. B goes to something. Now you have to decide what this something is so that it's a homomorphism. And all you ha have to have is that A and B should go to something which, which satisfies these relations. These relations have to be met. Suppose I send this to alpha, I send this to beta, say instead of AB, then I should have alpha to the n is one. Alpha is the nth root of unity. Beta is plus minus one. Beta square is one. But then other relation, B inverse, AB is A inverse. Because it's a homomorphism, you will get that 
alpha and beta should have this relation also. So which, which will mean that because alpha and you are in, you are having linear representations, alpha and beta are in non-zero complex numbers, they commute. So that means alpha is basically alpha square is one. So alpha is just plus minus one. So the only choice of homomorphisms from DN to non-zero complex numbers is, is this. A goes to plus minus one, B goes to plus minus one. So, so you get uh, these uh, representations. Okay. So let's talk about dihedral group uh, of uh, order eight. And le let us try to construct a two degree representation of a dihedral group of order eight, D4. So how do you view D4? Put my this thing on charging. Okay, so let's say uh, this is your uh, dihedral group. You can view it as uh, the group of symmetries of a square, right? So uh, this is my one zero, this is my zero one. Okay, other entries you can write accordingly. And this is minus one zero and zero minus one. Now, I have to decide, I'm going to write down a two degree representation of D4 from GL to say C. So A, A should, I should decide where are A and B can go to matrices A and B, basically A and B can go to matrices A and B, which, which satisfy the same relations as those of the group. If, if that happens, then there is a homomorphism from D4 to GL2C because D4 is, uh, you take free group on two generators and divide it with the normal subgroup generated by the relations, the relations. So because of that, so all, all you need is that A to the 4 is 1, B square is 1 and B inverse AB is equal to A inverse and you can achieve this relations by the group action because uh, look at the D4 is the group of symmetries of a square. So I can take four order element as the rotation through angle pi by two and two order element in D4 by reflection through say this diagonal and those are the two generators. So A I can take as rotation through pi by four and B, I can take as the reflection, reflection through uh, this diagonal, say. Okay. Reflection through the diagonal. Now, if you look at linear transformation from R2 to R2, From R2 to R2, you look at the linear transformation by rotation through angle pi by 2. Then what is that linear transformation? Where is 0, 1 going to? So what are the bases? How do you write linear transformation? You have to send bases to bases and then what you get is a uh, 1, 1 on 2 transformation from this to this and matrix of that will be an invertible matrix. So basically rotation through pi by two is that I send zero one will go to, sorry, one zero will go to zero one and zero one will go to minus one zero. So A, I, I can map to, so one zero is going to zero one. So the matrix which I am going to get will be this. This will be the matrix of linear transformation, which is given by rotation through 
pi by pi by 4 and b goes to b i am taking as the reflection through this diagonal so this this element will will come here and this element will come here so 1 0 will get mapped to 0 minus 1 and 0 1 will get mapped to minus 1 0. so if i look at this linear transformation of r2 to r2 then then th this this is a representation so i'm i'm sorry this i have to take from g to gl to r i am getting over r, over reals so this is a representation this is a this is a homomorphism from dihedral group of order 4 to gl to r given by a going to this matrix b going to this matrix so we are representing the elements of dihedral group by matrices and what you get as a representation and this you obtained because the dihedral group was the group of symmetry of a uh, square. And so you obtained uh, um, as a linear transformation from R2 to R2. And you took the matrix of that linear transformation. And instead of uh, rotation through pi by 4, I can also take rotation through minus pi by 4. Then I, I my representation will change, but then I will prove that you, you can prove that these are equivalent representations once I define the concept of an equivalent re representation. Now, if I if I take a rotation uh, through um, minus pi by 4, then 1, 0 will go to, instead of this matrix, I will get 1, 0 will come to 0, minus 1. So, I will get this. And uh, where will 0, 1 go? 0, 1 will come to 1, 0. Whereas this, this matrix, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping the same diagonal or you can also change the diagonal. So then this matrix will also change. And this is another representation, but by changing the basis, or uh, you, you are not going to get any new representation. These are equivalent. At, at the moment, it's looking a different representation, but they are equivalent. I will come to the concept of equivalent of a representation. So this is how... Uh, group actions are are used in representations and soon i will define representation with a representation space and then i can in general say if you have a group acting on a set x then you can have a representation of g so so far i have defined representation of g as a homomorphism from g to glnf okay so, but GLNF is what? GLNF is isomorphic to, you take an n-dimensional vector space over F, take V to be a vector space of dimension n over F, and GLV is the group of automorphisms of V, all 1, 1, on to linear transformations from V to V. That's a group. And you also take the group of n cross n invertible matrices over F, which is GLNF, and then these two groups are isomorphic so uh, uh, so how are these two groups isomorphic that comes from your how can you prove that these two groups are isomorphic it comes from your uh, uh, linear algebra course uh, describe this isomorphism between glv and glnf once you know this isomorphism then i will uh, keep on switching easily from if i have a linear transformation from g to glnf then i'll say i have a linear transformation from g to glv and vice versa so let us just there are some uh, questions yes. uh, from the previous uh, example uh, d4 yes. so one person says rotation should be pi by 2 or pi by 4 the d4 uh... sorry 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 yeah pi by 2 pi by 2 uh, yeah yeah pi by yeah I'm sorry. Yeah. I I I think I said pi by four. I don't know. I thought it was pi, pi by two by only two. you said, but pi huh. by two. Yes, pi by two. I'm sorry if I by yeah, that's just a slip of tongue. I'm sorry. Pi by two. And yeah. uh, Prem asks every group action gives a group representation. Uh, that is a question mark. So yes, yes, yeah. Yes. We can define that. I will do that in this terminology. Is that okay? 
Yes, you can go ahead. I think you answered all the questions. Yeah. So uh, let us uh, describe this isomorphism from uh, GLV to GLNF. Uh, I'm just doing everything uh, from the scratch so that uh, if there are some uh, fresh master students, they are able to connect the uh, things with what they know. So uh, this is what you learn in your linear algebra course that... Uh, uh -huh. This uh, endomorphism of V, and of what you understand what is endomorphisms of V, all linear transformations. V is an n dimensional vector space over F. Endomorphism V is all linear transformations from V to V over F. May not be 1, 1, 1, 2, but all linear transformations from V to V over F. This is a ring. You can add two linear transformations, you get another ring, and you can compose two uh, you can compose two linear transformations. That is another uh, linear transformation from V to V. So that is the multiplication, and this becomes a ring. And this ring is isomorphic to this is the basic thing which you do in your linear algebra course that this endomorphism of V is isomorphic to the ring of n cross n matrices over F. And how is this isomorphism done? And then by restricting that isomorphism on invertible uh, linear transformations, you get isomorphism from GLV to um, GLN. So if you recall, how is this isomorphism done? Uh, you look at basis of take, take, take a basis. of V as a vector space over F. Now, for every linear transformation, T from V to V, there is a notion of the matrix of T relative to T, denoted by, which I will denote by the matrix of T relative to V. Just recall this notion because I, I will be using that. How is this, this defined? How is this obtained? You apply this linear transformation on basis element and write it as a linear combination of basis element, which is allowed, which is possible because that's a basis. And then you have TV2, you, you write it as a, and, and so on. And similarly, you have TVN. Now this matrix AIJ is, is called the matrix of, so whatever coefficients you get, you apply that on the, put that in the first column of the matrix. Whatever coefficients you get when you compute TV2, you put that in the second column of the matrix. And that is what my notion of uh, the matrix of T relative to B is. This you, you prove in, in your uh, this mapping theta from endomorphisms of V to N cross N matrices over F by mapping T to matrix of T relative to B. A fixed B is, is the ring homomorphism. It is 1, 1 and on 2 and therefore it is an isomorphism and therefore endomorphisms of V become isomorphic to N cross N matrices over it. And you have also proved in your linear algebra course that T is 1, 1 and on 2 if and only if uh, the matrix of T relative to any basis you take is an invertible matrix, right? Therefore, by restricting T on 1, 1, onto linear transformations, that means on the unit group of the endomorphism ring, what you get is a homomorphism from GL, uh, an isomorphism from GLV to GLN. So, 
all 1 1 on 2 linear transformations from v to v over f are in 1 1 correspondence with all invertible n cross n matrices over f so therefore i can uh, define a representation as a homomorphism from g to glv where v is a finite dimensional vector space over f so and what will be the degree of the linear transformation it will be the dimension of because the degree of the linear transformation was n the size of the matrices and what will be the size of the matrices as as much as the dimension of v over f so the degree of if i write representation like it's a homomorphism from g to glv then degree of uh, the representation will be the dimension of v over f okay so uh, uh, all right so so that means if i have a representation in this form if if i have a representation t with the representation space v then how do i get this representation from g to gln f by by just uh, this if this representation is g going to tg then this representation is g going to in the matrix form i will write tg and i have to choose a fixed basis b of uh, the vector space and then if i compute matrix of tg relative to the basis b then this is in the matrix form and conversely if t is given this in this form where g going to say ag then i have to take uh, the corresponding t from g to g l v i can now take v as fn n dimensional vector space over f so i will take v as fn and uh, g will go to tg tg is linear transformation whose matrix with respect to say canonical basis is ag so you can write down if ag is your aij so you can write down what this tg is now tg is such that the matrix of tg relative to this basis is your given so i can i can go from this side to this side this side to this side so i will keep uh, switching between uh, representation in with the vector space or representations in the matrix form now let me define permutation representation so what is permutation representation say uh, you uh, these are defined for sn i i will first define it for sn and then i will uh, define it uh, with a group action also suppose your group is sn okay now i take a vector space with bases v1 v2 vn sn acts on 1 2 3 up to n right sn is an action xn sn is sn acts on 1 2 3 up to n so i have taken a vector space with bases v1 v2 vn and i set sigma so what is the homomorphism from g to glv sigma going to sigma is in sn sigma going to t sigma how is t sigma defined t sigma i i want this to be a linear transformation from t sigma should be 1 1 on 2 linear transformation from vector space v to v now v is with basis v1 v2 vn okay so it is enough to define this on basis elements so in order to define this linear transformation from v it is enough to know where are basis elements going to so i say v1 goes to v sigma 1 v2 goes to v sigma 2 and vn goes to v sigma n okay so so this is a 1 1 on to linear transformation from v to v because uh, i'm sending bases to bases this linear transformation will remain 1 1 on to and so this t sigma is an element of glv and it's a homomorphism you can check and uh, therefore it's a representation of sn and this is called permutation representation of sn what is its degree its degree will be n because the uh, it is the dimension of v as a vector space over f its degree is n now if instead i can just improve this permutation representation say i have a group acting on a set x so um, i will uh, 
I will first explain permutation. Uh, suppose I have a group G acting on. Suppose a group G acts on a set X. Okay, so my set X is say X1, X2, X. Now I, I can take a vector space with X1, X2, Xn as a basis. And then I can I can define the same way as the permutation representation. Define map from G to GLV by sending G to TG, where what is TG? TG is linear transformation which sends XI. XI, where will XI go to? The action of G on XI. The group G acts on the set X. So action of G on X, it's a, it's a, it's some new X J. So that is what the linear transformation is. And then it's, it gives you a representation of G representation of G of degree, how much degree as the size of the set X. If G X on a set with M elements, then with this, I get a representation of degree M. Okay, so somebody asked uh, this question about uh, group actions and uh, is that clear? Or if there is any doubt, I can still ask, answer. Yeah, I think two, three, we're asking the same question. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, so, uh, so that way, similar to permutation representation, it is one example uh, of a representation from a group action because SN was acting on one, two, three, up to n. So this this notion can be uh, generalized to uh, representations coming from group actions. Now, uh, say what will be uh, this representation in the matrix form? Permutation representation in the matrix form. Say, so let let's try to understand how how do you write down? Say, I I want to write, write down a permutation. Say, represent. Let, let's write down image of some one or two elements so that it is clear to you. Say I, I say let's say I am talking of S4. I am talking of S4. Then I will get a representation of degree 4. Say I am talking over complex numbers. Now in this representation, say I want to see where is 1, 2, 3 going to. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3 is going to. Now the linear transformation which you are going to get from 1, 2, 3 is that V1 goes to V2. If V1 goes to V2, then the first column will be this. This is, I told you, how do you write matrix of a representation from a linear transformation? You compute it on basis, write it as a linear combination of the basis, and then put the coefficients in the columns. Okay. So because now V1 goes to V2 in the, the sigma takes V1 to V2. So this, this will be this. And then now V2 goes to V3, V3 goes to V1 and 4 is kept fixed. So this is the matrix, what you are going to get. So where will 1, 2 into 3, 4 go to? 1, 2 into 3, 4 will go to 1 goes to 2 and 2 goes to 1. 3 goes to 4. So this will be the column and 4 goes to 3. So this way. Right. So, so this way you can write down homomorphism from SN to GLN. See, you can write down the image of any element. So, uh, what's a regular representation? Regular representation. There is one question. Uh, if we have a homomorphism G to GLV where V is infinite dimensional vector space, do we call it a representation? Surojit. Yeah, yeah. Those those are representations uh, uh, in infinite dimensional. So uh, yes, 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 yes. But I will be talking over uh, representations over finite dimensional vector spaces only. Uh, yes, you can. Okay, so uh, this is, uh, I, I am going to define a regular representation. A regular representation is that you take a finite group G and uh, look at uh, the group algebra FG. 
Mm, I have to define with you. I think uh, these students uh, may not uh, be familiar with the uh, group algebra. Okay, so uh, yeah, so you just take, uh, I, I just need to, you take the vector space with G as a basis. So this is this is your G, G1, G2, Gn. So you, you just take F linear combinations of these elements of G. So you, you, you form these elements, formal F linear combinations of elements of G. So basically you are taking vector space with G1, G2, Gn as a basis. And I have asked, as, as of now, I'm not give, going to give any uh, the serine structure, but I just look at it as a vector space over it. So later on, I'll, I'll tell you that this is a ring and then we'll study modules over this ring and so on. But just look at all F linear combinations of elements of G. It's a vector space over F. Okay. By using the multiplication of the group, you can easily give a ring structure to this FG. It's called the group algebra of G over F. And so if you look at this vector space FG, then uh, you look at this mapping from G to GLV by mapping G to TG. Now what is TG? TG, you have to define TG as a linear transformation from V to V over F. So basis elements, as, as I said, basis elements are group elements. Say H is, suppose H is a group element, where do I map H2? I will map, I am mapping H2 G times H. This is another group element, which is another element of the basis. So basis is going to basis. It's a one, one onto linear transformation from V to V. And you map G to TG, and this is a well-defined homomorphism, and it's called a regular representation of G, regular representation of a finite group G. So what is the degree of the regular representation? It, it is as much as the order of the group because the dimension of uh, the vector space V over the field F is the order of the group. So as much as the order of the group, this is what the degree of uh, this representation is. So uh, let's say a regular representation in the matrix form, what will be uh, this? So if I write down representation in the matrix form, then it will be G2, GL and F, where G is going to the matrix of TG relative to B. TG is the same. If you remember, TG of GJ is GGJ. So the matrix will be, so the matrix of TG relative to the basis B will be Aij, where this Aij is uh, what? One, if Ggj is Gi and zero otherwise. So this is the matrix uh, you are going to get. So let's say regular representations of uh, cyclic groups. So let's write down regular representation of a cyclic group in the matrix form. Say T. So it will be of order uh, degree n, GLNF. Now, I, I just need to write down where is A going to because it's a cyclic group. Now, where will A go to? Now, TA, TA is going to map 1 to A, 1 to A meaning the first column will be this. A is going to A square. So this is the second column and this is the uh, last second column and this is the last column. So it's a circulant uh, matrix. So which which came in the morning. So a regular representation of cyclic groups A is going to this uh, circulant uh, matrix. So let me call this by capital A. So maybe you can try writing regular representations of uh, say uh, dihedral group DN or D2N whatever you call. You can write down regular representations uh, as, as an exercise. Now, let me come to uh, sub-representation, concept of sub. So I have defined with you what a representation is in the matrix form and in the vector space form. And, and they, they, are, they are just the same. You, you should know how to go from one to other. And now I am going to define sub-representations. So representations of, like you talk of the concept of uh, subspace, subgroup, subring. 
so you also talk concept of a sub representation so basically as 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 the natural so i have a representation is from g to glb so basically g going to tg so i will restrict this linear transformation on certain kind of subspaces so let me just uh, go through this suppose v and w are two vector spaces then you know the concept of direct sum of two vector spaces and uh, the dimension of the direct sum is the sum of the dimensions and uh, then i will view v v as a subspace of v direct sum with w by viewing the v inside v as the tuple v0 and i will so a basis of v and a basis of w if i take and i take their union then that will be a basis of v direct sum with w now suppose you have a linear transformation of v and a linear transformation of w suppose i have a linear transformation of v and a linear transformation of w then i can talk of the linear transformation of v direct sum with w uh, by um, by this obvious map we uh, on the first component you apply t and on the second component you apply the linear transformation on w and if t and s are one one on two then t sum s is also one one on two linear transformation from uh, v direct sum with w to uh, v direct sum with w and if you compute uh, the as i told you if b and b dash are bases of v and w respectively then uh, t uh, this is a basis of v direct sum with w and if you compute matrix of t relative to this basis then it is this uh, these two on the diagonal and zero is where so i i i will uh, need this uh, representation in the matrix form so this is how uh, direct sum of uh, representations is defined g going to uh, g going to tg sum sg tg is a linear transformation from v to v one one linear transformation from v to v sg is from w to w so tg sum sg is from v direct sum with w to v direct sum with w and uh, this is a well defined homomorphism and it it gives you a representation of g on a representation space v direct sum with w so uh, i'm sorry i i'm first telling you direct sum of representations and then i will come to sub representations so this is direct sum of two representations so uh, this is t this is s then the direct sum of two representations is a representation of bigger degree on it's it's with representation space v direct sum with w and with this definition so in the matrix form what what i am saying is that if if i have g to glnf this is one representation and other representation is from g to glmf then what you are saying that you have this mapping from g l n plus m f by mapping g going to say say g going to say a g here and g going to say b g here then in the matrix form i all i am saying is that you look at this matrix if a g and b g are invertible n cross m and m cross m then this is an invertible invertible matrix of size n plus m cross n plus m this is what i am saying that you just blow up the sizes and then you get uh, direct sum of uh, two representations uh, all right uh, now is uh, uh, concept of uh, equivalence of uh, two representations okay kurmit before that actually there is a one question from sirish i mean she is asking us uh, you to repeat the regular representation is it possible for you to explain again yeah yeah sure sure yeah. she wants that definitely a regular representation this one ah uh, yeah ah uh, yes she wants the definition i think again yeah so yeah 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 so you look at uh, g is a finite group you look at vector space with the group elements as bases right so you just take uh, formal f linear combinations of group elements say if your group is say s3 you just take and suppose your field f is complex numbers then uh, 
what I am saying is that you look at CS3. CS3 means lambda 1, S3. So this is the identity element of S3, then lambda 2 times the next element and lambda 3 times 1, 3, lambda 4 times 2, 3, uh, lambda 5. I'm sorry, this is too much of, uh, I, I need to erase this. Lambda 5 times 1, 2, 3 and lambda 6 times uh, 1, 3, 2. So you look at all C linear combinations of group elements, whatever your group is. This is just an example of S3 I've written. Whatever your group is, you take the C linear combinations of those elements. So you get a complex group algebra. So similarly, you just take formal F linear combinations of those group elements. You get a vector space over F. Okay, I'm not saying it's a ring or anything at the moment. That's a vector space over F. And now you look at the mapping G going to TG. Now, how is, see, this, this is what you have to define. That is what you're doing in, what, where is this, what is this linear transformation? I say this linear transformation, see, it is enough to define a linear transformation on a basis elements. So these group elements are basis elements of this vector space. V is formal F linear combinations of group elements. Group elements are basis elements. So I say you map H to GH. For example, if I am I'm having the say F is C and you are in S3. So what I am saying, say, say if I am writing one, what is T of 1, 2? T of 1, 2, 1, 1, uh, the identity of this uh, S3 will get mapped to 1, 2. And then 1, 2 will get mapped to 1, 2 into 1, 2, which is identity. 1, 3 will get mapped to 1, 2 into 1, 3 and so on. 1, 3 will get mapped to 1, 2 into 1, 3. So, T, G, H is G, H. Right? So, this is this is the mapping and this, this is called, this, this is a homomorphism and this is called regular representation. Actually, If that is clear. Should, can I move? Uh, yes, yeah, you can. So, yeah, so I am just talking of uh, the concept of equivalence of two representations. So, when do you say that these two representations are equivalent? So, you say that these two representations are equivalent if you can obtain one from the other. Suppose I have an isomorphism from V to W in such a manner that this homomorphism can be recovered from this homomorphism by some means, then I will say that these two are equivalent. So what you're saying that these two representations, this is a representation with the representation space V and this is with representation space W. If there is an isomorphism from V to W such that, now what is SG? SG is a linear transformation from W to W. So what you are doing? Phi inverse, phi inverse is from W to V. And then from V to V, you have TG. And then from V to W, you have phi. So if SG is equal to phi composed with TG composed with phi inverse for all G in G, then you say that these are equivalent uh, representations. These two are equivalent representations. So the first thing is that equivalent representations must have the same degree because you are getting an isomorphism between those two vector spaces with this additional property that there is a connection between, so you can obtain this linear transformation SG from TG via conjugation with this phi. Then you say that these two linear transformations are equivalent, right? So what do I say, what do I mean by equivalent linear transformations when I am, I have them in the matrix form. So what will I write? So these two linear transformations, this and this are equivalent so you, you think of, now you have a way to move from one to the other. You have to take the matrix with respect to the basis. So what do you get is that if you take the analog of what I have written here, if these two are equivalent, if these two are equal, then their matrices will also be the same and which will give me that this should be the criteria for the equivalence that this go here I have G goes to uh, TG and G goes to 
SG. So basically, so this matrix SG is conjugate of TG by some invertible matrix, but this should be true for all G in G. So this matrix U is independent of G. So if you can find the U invertible in cross N matrix over F independent of G such that TG is obtained from SG by conjugating with U, then you say that these two representations are equivalent and equivalent representations must have the same degree, which, which follows from your, uh, because there is an isomorphism from V to W. Now, so suppose I, I have, this is one basic example which, which you get is that if I have a representation from G to GLB and then I write their matrices form by taking two different bases. Now, if I, if I take a matrix form of this representation, this T is from G to GLB and I, I obtain its matrix analog G to GLNF by sending G to matrix of TG relative to a basis B. I've fixed a, fixed a basis B of B. Now someone else has taken another uh, basis B dash and obtained this representation. Then matrix, matrix of this representation, if I change uh, the basis will change, but then this is conjugate of this by the matrix of change of basis from B dash to B. That, that you, you have proved in your linear algebra course that if I change the basis, then the matrix of TG relative to B dash is equal to U inverse matrix of TG relative to B times U, where U is the matrix of change of basis. from B to B dash. Now, this is independent of G. This, this has nothing to do with G. So these two, if I change the basis and get two matrix forms of one representation, then those two are equivalent representations. So you're not going to get anything new up to equivalence. Uh, for example, I wrote regular representation of a cyclic group. Regular representation of a cyclic group. A is going to this circle and matrix. A is going to the circle and matrix. Okay. Uh, now, uh, you look at uh, U, which is the Vendermonde matrix. Take all nth roots of unity, zeta 1, zeta 2, zeta n, and form this matrix. Zeta 1 raised to n zeta 2, zeta 2 square and zeta 2 raised to the n, zeta n. Zeta i's are all nth roots of uh, unit in C. And this matrix is an invertible matrix called Vendermonde matrix. And if you calculate U, A, U inverse, then it is uh, zeta 1, zeta 2, zeta n on the diagonal. So, so this, this representation is equivalent to this representation. G to GLNC, which is A going to uh, zeta 1, zeta 2, zeta n on the diagonal. And this is, you know, this is direct sum of uh, these uh, one-dimensional representations of this G. A going to zeta i. A going to zeta i is a one-dimensional representation. And this T is a direct sum of these, these representations. And this regular representation is equivalent to direct sum of uh, these N linear representations. And this is this is coming from the determinant of the circular matrix factors into product of n linear factors and each linear uh, n linear factors and so on. So it, it is connected with that. I I I don't have time. It looks like I am not able to uh, finish. Uh, okay, I have not even reached sub representations. Uh, can I continue for 10 minutes or something? Maybe I you can take actually because we started late. No? So maybe. 
started late yeah. so no, i think it started at 127 only so you can go for another yeah, so i can take 5 five, 5 ten, uh, five minutes yeah so that i i just finish these notions and tomorrow i will uh, give them the connection with modules and uh, same be simple theory yes that. yes yeah yeah so what's a sub representation uh, now uh, you have a, if v is a vector space v is a say i am taking finite dimensional vector spaces over f and suppose i have a linear transformation from v to v now i phi restrict linear transformation on a subspace w then it is not necessary that i am going to land in w okay so you say that w is t invariant if it t of w is contained in w so that by restricting on w you get a linear transformation from w to w so w subspace of v is called t invariant if t of w is contained in w so that so so if i have a t invariant subspace then by restricting on w i'll get a linear transformation from w to w and of course if t is 1 1 this will stay 1 1 and now i am taking finite dimensional this will if it is 1 1 it will also be on to because i have the same dimension so if i if i take t in the endomorphisms uh, uh, say t in glv say if i have a t in glv and w is t invariant and i restrict t on w it will be a one one on to linear transformation from w to w right so that is what the next uh, notion i am going to define sub representation now t is a representation from g to uh, glv not glnv so glnf or glv so t is from g to glv this is a representation and w is a subspace which is g invariant when do i say that w is g invariant now let me define so here is t a representation t is from g to glv w a subspace of v is called t invariant or g invariant it is called both ways t invariant or g invariant if tg tg is a linear transformation from w to w so it takes w to w tg of w is contained in w for all g in g so what i get is that if w is t invariant or g invariant then tg restricted on w will be a one one on to linear transformation from w to w and so this this notion makes sense this this mapping makes makes sense if w is a subspace of v which is g invariant or t invariant then this this mapping g going to tg restricted to w makes sense it's well defined map and it's a homomorphism from g uh, to glw and it's a representation of g with representation space w so you are getting a representation of a smaller degree and it's called a sub representation of t okay so it its matrix analog will be what that suppose i take a matrix analog will be that i have to take matrices with respect to some basis so suppose i i take a basis of say w and i extend this to a basis of v so i extend this to a basis of v now if i calculate the matrix of tg relative to this basis b then the matrix will look like this because t of w1 is a linear combination of w1 w2 wt only t of w2 is a linear combination of these t of w2 is a linear combination of these t of w is contained in w tg of w is contained in w for all g 
So because of this, the first M columns will be, you, you will be getting zeros beyond this, beyond this. So the matrix will look like this. So our aim is to, to go to close to the block diagonal matrices. That is what the aim is. So this is the notion of an irreducible representation. Our representation is called irreducible if the only G invariant subspace of V are zero and V. So these are the only two G invariant subspaces of Okay. Then you say that your representation is irreducible and otherwise it is called a reducible representation. G invariant subspaces or T invariant subspaces I have defined with you. So if you have a reducible representation, then basically what you have is that there is a, suppose you are in the matrix form. I'm, I'm telling you side by side, both the things so that whatever context you study, it, it should be clear to you. So suppose you have a, this representation in the matrix form, then what I'm saying by a reducible representation is that there is a matrix U, invertible matrix, such that U, TG, U inverse is, is like, this it's a block upper triangular these are blocks this is m cross m and accordingly you compute the sizes now and this this u should be independent of this g there is a u such that when you conjugate tg with this u you should get these up block upper triangular matrix or you can similarly talk of the lower triangular edge. so uh Regular representation of a cyclic group is reducible. Why is regular representation of a cyclic group? In fact, regular representation is always reducible. We will see that. But since I just computed it with you, that you remember uh, for a cyclic group, the regular representation was, was like A going to uh, A going to the circle and matrix. Okay. And then we we proved that uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 and 1, 0, 0. We proved that this representation is equivalent to. So this, this matrix was conjugate to zeta 1, zeta 2, zeta n. So this is a reducible representation. Okay. So a completely reducible representation means that Whenever there is a gene, there is a subspace of V which is T invariant or G invariant, then there is another subspace which is T invariant such that V is equal to V is direct sum of W and W dash. So basically, so T is completely reducible means that it, it is equivalent to uh, a direct sum of two representations of smaller degree. So completely reducible representation, you are decomposing that representation as a direct sum of two representations of smaller degree because if, if these two are both are G invariant, then the matrix of TG relative to say, so you take a basis B of W and take a basis B dash of W dash and then compute this, then the matrix will look like some Thing here, something on this block and zero here, zero here. So this representation is made up of, is a direct sum of two sub-representations. Then you say that it's a completely reducible representation. So I think I will stop here and then I will, uh, uh, tomorrow I will uh, define, uh, uh, connect uh, representations with modules. And then uh, we will see the semi-simplicity of uh, the group algebra, AFG, master case theorem, when is it semi-simple? And so that when can you decompose your uh, module over FG into direct sum of irreducible submodules? And then we will give the connection that how can you decompose a representation into a sum of irreducible representations, of course, with constraints on the field F. So I will stop here.